Hello, this is Chris Hewer for Metal.com with an advanced tutorial for the Freeform Enhancement Pack Millennium Edition. I'd like to call it Digging Deeper because that's just what we're going to do. So let's get started. The first movie we're going to start with is actually the aluminum wipe on right here. And you can see the effect you get here with this project. So let's just click back to it. And here I've changed mine to the number three in an earlier tutorial. But what I want to look at is the main composition and just see what elements are in here. And this is a pretty basic one. It's got a really nice brushed aluminum texture and it's got the coloring that they'd like to see extending down the edges and around the sides. And then we've also got the aluminum displacement main. And we'll just take a quick look at that. And we've got a series of grayscale layers. Uh, you can see we've got a brighter stroke here and that just defines the bevel that you see in the main composition right there. And of course with this, if you wanted to make any changes, you'd change the shape composition in the B folder to change the, the number to a letter or anything else. And you'd change the stroke to reveal that character. All right, let's move on to our next project. I've skipped over a couple of compositions like copper and gold because they're basically exactly the same setup as aluminum. But I wanted to stop here in the aged copper because this has a slight difference in its color composition. So if we look down in the main composition, it's basically the same setup again. We've got a displacement map and we've got our color main and that's what I want to look into. So double click that. Now this is the layer that Freeform AE displaces. So right now we're seeing it flat. We've got our base color layer, which is this copper. And then we've also got this copper patina, which if we turn the eye off, is that green. So that is a place where you could do a little customizing. You could go in and change the noise pattern, you could change the color, and simply by changing those layers you can change the look of this composition quite a bit. So you could change it from copper with the green patina to moldy bread or something else. Still in here you would change your shape layer to change your character and then of course change the stroke layer to change the way it wipes on. Other than that there aren't many other differences so we're going to move on to our next project file. All right, the next project file I wanted to look at is concrete, and this one's quite a bit different. As you look at this, it wipes in with almost little chunky rocks instead of a metallic molten sort of a pattern. So this is an interesting one because the white pattern is very different. In the earlier projects, we were seeing a basic gradient wipe with a blobby lies effect to create the molten look. This time we'll dig in just a touch deeper. Down here in the composition, we've got a concrete color main file and back to the main we've got our displacement and this is where it gets interesting you can see that the wipe has a cool cell pattern look and if you're up to speed with freeform and its technology then you know that this displacement darker areas or transparent areas are going to be lower and brighter areas are going to be higher so you can see where that rocky pattern came from and if you want to dig in a little further you can see uh, what filters Millennium used to, to pull this effect off. Back in the main composition, it's basically the same setup otherwise. Let's move on to our next project. Okay, here we are in the lava project. Now this is a little bit lower res, so I can move a little faster. This one has uh, a lot more going on and it takes a little longer to render. Um, let me pull up our QuickTime movie. Just take a quick look at this one. It's coming up right here. This is a cool effect. It actually looks like hot lava pouring in and then watch behind the lava after it's passed for a bit. You'll actually see it set up and basically turn into kind of a dark black stone. So as you might have guessed, this is going to be a little more complicated. Let's take a peek. Down here in our composition folder, our main comp, we have one extra layer and that is an outside glow and right around the base of the lava you can see this glow right there and that's basically what it is. It does not have freeform applied to it. This is just a glow layer based on this lava pattern. We still have our color main. So in here you've got this great fractal fire pattern going. And if you really break it down, which I won't take the time to do now, you can see he's got a basic base fill, then he's got an edge to keep the edges hot. Then he also has lava color head right here, and that is the leading edge of the wipe, so it looks hot as it uh, moves forward in time. Let's close that. You still change this the same way. You come up here to the B folder, and you want to find lava shape and you can go in there and change this to whatever character figure you want put your own logo in there Then you need to come down here to the stroke base and change that so that your stroke reveals this pattern in whatever way you see fit 
Once that's done, you come down here, and there's one more difference, and that's that we have two wipe completion sliders. Wipe completion base and wipe completion cooling. Now cooling actually controls that second layer, that second wipe that gives you that cooled stone look. So you see we've got an offset here. The fiery layer wipes in first. So there's the fiery layer coming in. And now right back here, you can just see the starting edge of the cooling layer. And if I step forward to the end of the fire here, you can see we're about halfway through the cooling keyframes, and you can see that our cooling path is about halfway down the slide there. So this is a, a nice way to really customize how this effect is wiped on. That pretty much covers this project, so let's move on to our next project file. Here we are inside of the ice melting project. Let me go ahead and bring that up. That's at the start of the movie here. And it's a pretty nice effect. It gives you a great melting look. This one's actually a little easier to change because there's no wipe, just the melting. You'll notice that up here in the B folder of this composition, we have a shape composition, but there isn't a stroke composition. So to change this, all you need to do is go into Ice Melt Shape, type in whatever you want, drop in your logo, and when you come back out to your main comp, it's already set up. The differences come down here in the timeline. You can see there's a lot more going on down here. We've got a series of refraction and displacement layers that pretty much are just affecting the bottom look of this effect down here. And you can play with those by turning them on and off to see what they do. There's also a shadow layer that's right now casting up and to the left right here. And that's this red layer, and it says move corner pin for perspective. So you can actually change the perspective on that shadow. If you hit the E key on that layer, you've got corner pin right there. And then above all of that, you've got your Ice Color Main, which has Freeform applied to it, and that's the main letter that you're seeing here. And then you have this Ice Frosting, which is just one more little layer of polish. And if we turn that off, there we are. You see that a lot of that sort of highlight frosty pattern is gone from the top of the ice now. We'll turn that back on again and move on to the next project file. Okay, so here we are inside of the Electrofluid project file. It's got a great three-dimensional translucent look to it. The workflow for this project is basically the same as the simpler projects like aluminum or copper. You've got your shape pre-comp right here and then come right down here to stroke and that's where you'd reshape your stroke to match. Now down here in your main composition we've got a lot more going on. We've got our electrofluid color incidence, we've got color top, color bottom, and a light halo. And if you look we've actually got freeform on four different layers here. So this will take a little more time to render on your system than the other effects because you've got four instances of freeform. But for this effect, I'd say it's well worth it. But don't let this scare you. Just remember the workflow is just as simple as the earlier projects. Moving on to our next composition. All right, we're in Glow Wipe, our final project. And if we take a look at it up here in our movie file, you'll see that it's a hard-edged wipe with a nice glow around it. So it's got a real kind of a neon feel as it wipes in. Very high tech, great for communications company. Let's take a look at the project file. Overall, this one is pretty much like, again, the earlier projects we looked at. It's got your glow shape right here. You've got your glow stroke. And then down here, you've got your color and your displacement. So it's pretty simple. Also, only one wipe controller. The only difference here is if you highlight your glow wipe color main, and hit the E key, you'll see you've got Freeform AE right here, but you also have two glow effects. And you can change these to change the intensity of your glow. So that wraps up our advanced look at the Freeform Enhancement Pack Millennium Edition. Definitely take the time to just go through these project files and study them. Go ahead and reverse engineer them yourselves and figure out how each of these looks and effects were pulled off. It'll really help you in your day-to-day -day work in After Effects. For Metal.com, I'm Chris Hewer. Keep watching.